Hey up. You might remember last year, sometime during the summer I think it was, I reviewed the Lightlock Core Motor. A formidable cable lock designed for the protection of motorcycles when you leave them unattended. Made by a company called, well, Lightlock. Now, over the last year or so, they seem to have shaken the motorcycle security industry up a little bit. With one or two other well-known companies sort of scrambling to catch up with... You know, the advances that Lightlock have made. A clear sign that the motorcycle security industry did need a bit of a shake-up. They needed some new blood. It's a good thing for me and you. Now, whenever I make videos um, about security, or even luggage for that matter, I always get the bedwetters complaining. You know, it doesn't matter what you do. If a thief wants it bad enough, he'll get into it somehow. There's no point spending all that money on these fancy locks. Well, yeah, I sort of agree and also disagree. With the right tools and enough time, a determined thief may well be able to defeat almost any security option that you care to fit to your bike. But if you're going to take that apathetic stance that well, there's nothing I can do about it, you may as well just leave your bike unlocked with the ignition keys in it and make it easy for him. The thing is, I know thieves. I'm an ex-copper and I've spoken to and dealt with a lot of thieves over the years. And thieves are thieves because the lazy that don't want to work for a living. So they enter into a career of just taking things that belong to other people. Now, that same laziness applies to their activities as a billy bike burglar. When selecting motorcycles to steal, they will always take the path of least resistance. The most attractive motorcycle to them is the one that has the least protection because he knows that that motorcycle is going to be the easiest and quickest motorcycle to purloin. If you put a cheap, easy to defeat lock on your bike, he's going to know what model it is, he's going to know how easy it is to remove, and again, that bike is going to be attractive to him. But if you put a lock on your motorcycle that has a reputation for being a bit of a bugger to get off without the key, is going to think twice about it and if he does attempt it it gives you as the owner of that motorcycle the advantage of time it increases the likelihood of him being disturbed and having to do a runner it increases the chances of him giving up but in a lot of cases it will just completely put off your average bike thief that's not equipped for the job so, although a decent quality lock might not completely remove the possibility that your bike's going to be stolen, it substantially stacks up the odds against it being stolen. That is the philosophy behind any type of vehicle security. Now, I also get a lot of, shall we say, London-centric comments about, you know, how bad crime is there, how, you know, bike thieves are organised, they've got all the equipment necessary to get any bike with any lock on it. Well, that's an easy one to beat, really. If you live down there in that London, sell up and move up north, anywhere north of the Humber. The crime rate's lower, the air's cleaner, the grass is greener, the cost of living is lower, and motorcycling is far more enjoyable. And if you play your cards right within a decade, or two, we may even accept your presence and begin talking to you. Right, so what was it I was going to tell you about today? Ah, right, yes, I remember now. One of the complaints about the car motor was that it is very big and it's very heavy. Not exactly something that you can just stick in your back pocket and carry around with you on your little motorcycle journeys or your commute to work. And neither, for that matter, is the lock that I'm going to show you today. But it's a little bit closer. It's certainly a lot smaller and a lot lighter, so it's a lot easy to travel around with. But just because it's small doesn't mean that it's going to be a pushover if Billy Bite Burglar decides to have a go at it. This is the Light Lock X1. Now, this is designed for pedal cycles before you start rolling your eyes, it's also suitable for motorcycles. 
Its compact farm-to-man man lends its use very well for commuting and for a spot of touring where you want to carry some form of security with you but space and weight are at a premium. This is ideal. It's a standard D-lock configuration but it does have some rather special features. Now this particular X1 comes with an Art4 specification lock which is pretty good in its own right. If you want a higher specification lock they also do the X3 but because this is a little channel they didn't think I was worthy of having one for test. Now I'll get onto the special armoured coating in a minute. First of all, this lock is designed with an anti-rotation feature so if you just cut one side of the U-shaped, actually I don't know what you call it, let's call it a staple you still can't get the lock off because you won't be able to twist it in the lock to get it free so it's got to be cut in two places to be able to remove it which immediately gives you the advantage over cheaper locks because whichever way you look at it it's going to take twice as long to remove it now the art accreditation runs from one to five five being the most secure lock type so an art four is pretty high spec in fact, it's considered the benchmark where motorcycle security is concerned. The lock is corrosion resistant, but just for the icing on the cake, if you like, the actual lock aperture where you put the key in is a self-healing silicon type, so it's a belt and braces job. The lock itself is fully armoured, and then is placed inside a plastic casing to protect your bike against scuffs and scratches. So is the staple, it's rubber armoured, but Light Locker have clearly done everything they can to ensure that your bike is not just protected against theft, it's also protected against the lock. The lock comes with two, obviously, identical high security keys, but you can order more from the Light Lock website if you happen to lose one. So what is so special about this lock that makes it stand out from the crowd? Well, I would like to tell you that the actual staple on this lock was forged by elves in the black pudding mines of Nottingham using metal from an ancient meteorite that has magical powers. But if I did, I would be telling lies and actually the truth is a lot more interesting than that. Now, the actual core of the staple is made from a high-grade, fine-grained, high tensile steel which is what you would expect to find on a lot of the better locks but they've taken it a step further they've created an alloy that they call baronium named after the founder of the company and i believe that this is a metal based composite using ceramics now i'm not quite sure how this is applied it looks like it's sort of welded in place and what you have are numerous ribs that go the entire length of the staple, basically giving it an armoured coating. So they've got to get through those ribs before they can get to the actual high tensile steel underneath. And that's the clever bit, because that armoured coating eats grander discs for breakfast and then spits the bits out. Now, I have watched one or two tests of this particular lock in action by one or two channels which I normally find to be a bit disingenuous if I'm honest and although granted they did finally manage to cut the lock free they went through two grinder discs it took them a ridiculous length of time and they were using a high torque mains powered grinder which of course is something that's just not going to be available to your average bike thief so it's clear to me that this is very probably the most secure motorcycle D-lock on the market. In fact, it does have the Soul Secure Diamond certification, which is the highest certification a lock like this can get. 
Now, I've just been running uh, a little clip from their website in the background there while I was talking. It shows you sort of various ways that you can use this lock to secure your bike. And yes, it's better than nothing if that's the only way you can do it. The only problem is motorcycle gangs back in the 1980s and 1990s were running around in Ford Transit vans three or four lads at a time who would simply pick the bike up, stick it in the back of the van and deal with the lock later. In fact, that is how the organised gangs work. So, the methods shown on their website are fine against a privateer, but for proper security, I would always recommend actually anchoring your bike to an immovable object, which removes the luxury of then being able to steal your bike that way. Most bike packs have a rail or posts or some sort of metal loop that you can fasten bikes up to. I recommend that you use them in the manner that you've seen here. I mean, I remember dealing with a job in the late 1980s where an East Coast gang had taken well over 300 bikes in a month that way. Some of which had locks on, some didn't. And I'll tell you for free, using this method should ensure that your bike will still be there when the bikes on either side were gone in 60 seconds. Just a little bit more effort and common sense. Now, these locks are not cheap, but I think you get what you pay for with bike security. And it's always worth consulting your insurance company because they might give you a small discount for using a lock such as this. Now, I will leave a link in the video description down below to Lightlock's website for this lock. They did offer me an affiliate link where I get 5% from any sales, but I decided to turn it down. You know, I brought this um, product to your attention for your benefit, really. And call me stupid if you like, but I didn't feel comfortable uh, profiting from any sales. Not for a bike security product, it doesn't feel right. I was also unable to um, sort of negotiate any sort of discount for viewers. Sorry about that. So, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos, and in doing so, helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you would leave a like to feed the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. And if you do subscribe, hit the notification bell and ensure that your notifications in your channel account are enabled. That way you'll be informed whenever I upload a new video. I will of course be back on Friday where I think we're going to take a look at a new automatic watch. So until then, please ride safely and I'll see you soon.